welcome back to Egypt. Now, I'm pretty sure you can guess where I am right now. The river that has been the lifeblood of this country for thousands of years. Now, I know that Egypt is synonymous to the Nile, but it is so vast. It actually travels through nine different countries. But today, Egypt is our star. So I thought maybe we'd sample some village life, meet the people who get to live on the river. And also, of course, we'll explore the temples that have made this country famous for so many years. So if you, like me, suffer from a serious case of wanderlust, this is your show. Last week, we journeyed from the pyramids, one of the world's most ancient wonders, down south to Luxor and the famous Valley of the Kings. This week, Scenic's 20-day Essence of Egypt and Jordan tour has us gliding down the Nile, headed for some of the country's most prized temples. Then, we're going on to the magic of Aswan and finishing up at the awe-inspiring Abu Simbel. Now, most of Egypt consists of dry desert, making the Nile the country's lifeline. This was the original ancient highway. Today, it's delivered us to Dendra, the best preserved of all of Egypt's ancient temples. I think I have found my favorite goddess. In the middle, this is Hathor standing with her husband Horus, but more about him later. Hathor was the goddess of joy, love, fertility, singing, dancing, all the good things in life. And for obvious reasons, she had a cult following. This temple is the biggest one dedicated totally to all the wonderful things that Hathor represented. Let's have a look. The temple of Hathor is the most impressive building in the complex with its grand entrance, detailed carvings, and of course, the colour, still vivid after thousands of years. I love the colour. Which colour? <laughs> <laughs> the blue, the, the blue, turquoise. turquoise blue. She's the lady of turquoise. She was the patron goddess of turquoise mines in Sinai, so that's why everything is blue here, even her hair, meant to be brown or black, but the hair is blue too. The goddess Hathor was revered for many centuries, but there was a time when Christianity challenged that devotion. Sala, why has her face been scratched out everywhere? Uh, in fact, this done was by early Egyptian Christians to make, uh, you know, like them believe in Christianity. Because all the locals were devoted to their gods. Exactly. So they wanted to prove to them that all of these figures, that it's not true religion, defacing their faces. And these, fig these gods, they couldn't defend themselves. But I think what has sparked my interest is on the temple's second level. What is possibly one of the world's first ever astrology charts? Oh, there it is. All the signs of the horoscope. Do you read your horoscope? I read my horoscope every day. Now there is a connection. So Hathor, the baby that she looked after, she was sort of like the babysitter to the god Horus. He was the god of the sky and when he grew up she married him. Now the Egyptians followed the same year as what we do now and they also followed astrology. So if you look up here we've got the Cancerian crab, I can see the Taurian bull. It's quite amazing. So horoscope comes from Horus, the god of the sky. Dendra is the temple that just keeps on giving, with mysteries and surprises around every single corner. Now, I do not want to overwhelm you, but I thought you may be interested in seeing the last remaining image of Cleopatra VII in the world. Everything else has been destroyed, but here is Cleo, you know, Liz Taylor, Liz Taylor, with her son, Caesarian, from Julius Caesar, Liz and Dick. Fabulous hair. Back on board the Sanctuary Sunboat, it's time to glide on in style to our very next destination, 
On board, nothing has been overlooked. The cabins are opulent, the food is top-notch, and the generous staff ratio means you will not want for a thing. And then there is the entertainment program. Scenic truly has all bases covered. Welcome back to the Nile, the lifeblood of ancient Egypt. And these days, the access point to some of the country's most magnificent sites. So this is this is the way to get around when yes, you're traveling along the Nile. Exactly, island. this is the, the traditional way, the old way. So we're heading now into the temple. It will take us like, let's say, 10 minutes from here. On this journey, you'll experience a whole range of transport options, allowing you to really and truly get a feel for local life. It's just crazy. It's yeah. nuts around here. Yes, it's very lively. Everyone is buying their food. Our trusty steed has delivered us to Edfu, Egypt's second largest temple, uncovered in the 1860s. This building took nearly 200 years to complete. And, for what it's worth, if you had come here around about 200 years ago, you wouldn't have even known this place existed. It was buried underneath rubble. And then, when they started to excavate, what they found was not only one of the biggest, but also the most complete ancient temple in the world. It's also known as the Temple of Horus, the god to whom it is dedicated. Now, I gather he's a bird because he was the god of the sky. I know he's the god of the sky. Exactly. But also of kingship, were yes. you saying? Yes, exactly. He became like the, the good governor on Earth, the good ruler on Earth. Oh, what I can't get my head around is the fact that this was all under rubble a couple of hundred years ago. Ex that, that didn't exactly. Be. But I suppose that, that sand, that dirt, preserved it. Is that right? Yes, it played big, big role in that. The gigantic pylons are one of the temple's highlights. They are massive. Over 30 metres high, they are decorated with battle scenes. It's the detail here that remains after so many thousands of years that's truly remarkable. I had been told to come in and have a look at this room because what it proves is that the ancient Egyptians were as obsessed with essential oils and aromatherapy as we are today. So this is the room where they would mix all their oils, exactly. is that right? Mix, store, all of that took place here in this very special room. And these are the ingredients. It is immaculate it's so neat exactly so basically someone could come in here and go okay for this particular scent i'm going to look up this i'm going to mix 10 parts to one here we go exactly we have here all the, uh, these measures we have the, their ancient egyptian numbers like the upside down u yeah. is a 10 the sticks here are ones and in fact the french translated all of these hieroglyphics and they made like these essences So from here, we are back to scenic sanctuary sunboat for an afternoon of cruising. But just after sunset, the adventure continues. Now, I just wanted to quickly show you one of the reasons why people love sailing down the Nile. We have just docked our boat, walked across a gangplank, and here we are at night at a 2,000-year-old temple. Easy access. Thanks to its prime position on the Nile, in ancient times, Komombo was one of Upper Egypt's most important stops. Cruising on the Nile is one of those travel experiences that is sure to stay with you forever. But it is just one of a long list of highlights that we've been lucky enough to enjoy on our epic trip with Scenic uncovering the essence of Egypt and Jordan. Now, we're only halfway through our 20-day journey and every single day promises 
an exciting new adventure. Now where we're going to is the Temple of Philae. It is absolutely beautiful. But what is quite remarkable is they had to completely shift the location of the temple because they created in the 1970s the Aswan Dam. So rather than the temple being flooded and losing it completely, they just moved it. The temple complex is now on a neighboring island and access is only by boat. It was moved piece by piece in all of its original glory as part of an eight year rescue project ensuring all the incredible detail is still intact. Now I've got a love story for you with a happy ending. Have you heard of the book A Thousand and One Arabian Nights? Okay, well one of the stories is set on this island when the beautiful princess falls in love with a commoner. Her father, the king, is so outraged, he locks her up on this island, surrounded by crocodiles. So her beloved, he tracks her down to here, but he can't cross the Nile because of the crocs, until one takes pity on him and allows him to travel across on his back where the lovers are reunited. The king is so moved by this story, he allows them to be married and live happily ever after. The end. Back on the mainland and scenic, has us booked in at what could possibly be the most wonderful hotel I have ever had the pleasure of visiting. Not only is the Cataract Hotel a legendary establishment, its location in Aswan is so beautiful, it is almost surreal. We actually have Thomas Cook, the man himself, to thank for creating one of the world's most iconic hotels. He not only knew that travellers would absolutely adore everything Egyptian, but the vision to create a hotel right opposite Elephantine Island at the very first Cataract Gorge in a position where no big boats could possibly dock. No wonder they say the man was a genius. This location has inspired many a great mind, but possibly the most famous was one of the world's greatest crime novelists, Agatha Christie. On this balcony is where she sat waiting day after day for her husband, who was an Egyptologist, who would go out to work. She was so lonely, her brain started to tick over. And here is where she wrote Death on the Nile. Now I did promise you earlier, this trip would offer an array of transport options and the Felucca would have to be my personal favourite. These traditional wooden sailing boats still sail the Nile as they have done since the time of the pharaohs. These days they mostly transport tourists like us and since the Feluccas rely entirely on the breeze, it's a slow and incredibly peaceful experience. No Sala, flowers. thank you. It's it's just beautiful such a perfect wind. afternoon. Yeah, it's beautiful. Just a beautiful. And nice so, temperature. So lovely to yeah. be on a felucca. Exactly. Live it like a local. Yeah. Our final stop in Egypt on our 20-day essence of Egypt and Jordan adventure with scenic is Aswan. And it's here that the Nile is at its most beautiful. This stretch of the Nile is also home to a number of Nubian villages, an ethnic group from southern Egypt and northern Sudan. It is the main gate to black Africa. 
And there is uh, many families, you know. We have a lot of families, you know, in, in the Sudan also, because the Sudan and Egypt, they were same country. They were as yeah. one once, yes. yeah. Yes. There's Nubian communities scattered right throughout the area. But Gamal, my guide, has invited us to visit one that is very close to his heart. This village, there are about 500 people they are living on. They have a nursery. Uh, they have a primary school. Oh. And as part of the visit, we are warmly welcomed into a local home. Hello, shukran, shukran. Yeah, welcome. Lovely. Yeah, oh, welcome. This is so colourful. Oh, I, lo I love the Egyptian tea. Is th what, what sort of tea is this? Hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea. Yes, but you need some more sugar because it has a little sour taste. It's nice. How much sugar are you having? No, I have uh, two and a half. Oh, I'll have two and a half too then. Yeah, Shukra. okay, you too. I suppose by our standards, Nubians do live simply. They do work very hard and they worship often and despite what we would consider their lack of material wealth, they are so happy to open their homes to us. From here, we're headed to one of Egypt's greatest sites, and Scenic will make the journey there much easier than that of early explorers, with a flight that'll take you almost to the entrance. After the pyramids, Abu Simbel is the most visited ancient site in all of Egypt. Ramses II, arguably Egypt's greatest ever pharaoh. He took trying to impress the neighbours to a whole other level. He wanted this imposing structure to be the first thing that you saw as you sailed down the Nile from the south. So basically saying, do not mess with Egypt. Do not mess with me. Incredibly, this is not the original site. You see, the creation of the Aswan Dam threatened to submerge the temple, so it was moved and reconstructed from the original site in what is considered to be one of the greatest challenges in archaeological history. In fact, moving, they cut it into pieces using hand sewing, mechanical sewing, numbering all the stones, and then after rebuilding everything about 65 metres higher, 200 metres back. How is this for solar alignment? Inside the temple, you will find these four statues placed in such a way that twice a year, the sun shines directly through here on three of the statues, not the fourth on the left, because he is the god of the underworld. And the sun remains the longest on the one in the middle. Second from the right, Ramses, the man. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed every single moment of this journey through Egypt. I know that for a lot of people, this is a real bucket list trip. And for others, you are reliving magical memories. I just hope that you have enjoyed all that we've shown you. It's kind of like a highlights package with a little cherry on top.